What's going on, everybody? Okay, today is uh, Thursday, and uh, I was sitting here um, having some Starbucks, a little cold brew, not true, vanilla cream, uh, vanilla sweet cream added. So, a customer, or sorry, a subscriber, a viewer, you know, <laughs> uh, a watcher, um, asked, a, asked a question, said, hey, how do you price overgrown lawns and that question came from uh outdoors geek i believe was their name um so that actually i didn't answer that question uh with an answer to that question per se because it brought up a good topic actually for a great video and you know you see these videos you know and there's nothing new everybody's got about and everybody has their different um you know ways on how they they price overgrown properties. So, you know, there's a lot of things to consider when pricing an overgrown property. So I made a list right here and we're gonna cover some of those. Now that's not the end all be all list. There's just some things I needed to write down so that way I can be sure to mention to you guys. So, all right, we're gonna jump right into it because I got a lot of work to do today. I got like 15 lawns. Okay, so the first thing to consider is uh, how tall the grass is. Oh wait, hold on just a second. Um, okay, how tall the grass is. That makes a big difference, you know? Um, if it's, you know, an overgrown property to someone, maybe a foot tall, okay? Like to a homeowner. You know, to a lawn and landscaper, they're like, dude, that's nothing. That could be a two-week growth on some properties. So, another one, you know, like someone was just mentioning uh, on one of my posts that they're cutting seven-foot-tall Johnson grass today. I don't even know what Johnson grass looks like. But seven feet tall, I know what seven feet tall looks like, and that's no joke. Maybe he meant seven inches. Maybe it was seven inches, but I went back and read it. I could have swore it said seven feet. But anyways, um... He's up in Stephenville, I believe. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so how tall it is makes a difference because if it's, you know, uh, one foot, two foot, three feet, you know, that in your mind, the taller it is, more times you're going to have to go over it. And when you do those types of cleanups, you know, you don't want to just keep going in the same direction, you know, row after row. You know, you want to go, like if you go this way one row, right? Come back that same row and and cut and go the other direction because that grass wants to lay down, you know, and then it starts to come up a little bit. And as you go this way, you know, that um, the prop blast or whatever or turbulence or wind or vacuum, whatever you want to call it, vacuum, I guess, comes here and lifts that up and then cuts that off on the way back through. Uh, it has a better chance of doing that anyways. Uh, the taller the grass is. From the time the front of that mower deck, you know, hits that tall grass, and it's like three feet tall, you know, um, then it's going to lay down. It may, when it tries to come up again, it may not hit those blades to be cut because it's so tall. <clears throat> That's why you may have to go, go forward, and then when you're just above it, go backwards. That'll cause that grass to want to buckle up and get up, and then those blades will get that. So sometimes you got to be a little, um, you know... Uh, thinking outside the box when you're trying to get this tall grass done. Um, so that makes a big difference, you know, the tall grass. Um, the other one is how wet and how dry. Okay, the wetter the <clears throat> anytime you're doing, <coughs> excuse me, anytime you're doing a uh, oh, uh, overgrown cleanup, try your best to do it when the grass is completely dry because it will cut it will cut easier. The the wetter it is, the thicker it is, the taller it is, the more it's going to clump up inside that mower deck and have a hard time. You know, open discharge is what you want to do. It's going to have a hard time getting out of the chute. It's going to, you know, you might have to clean that deck off. Uh, you know, it just depends. So that type of stress on the mower makes a big difference. You know, if it's wetter, you might have to go slower. All of a sudden, now your time increases. So you want to think about that. Think about this as, as a starting point. So 
Let's just say you do that property on a regular and it's not overgrown. How much would you charge? 40 bucks, 50 bucks, 65? You know, it all depends on the size of the property. Let's just say $50. Okay, well, you know, it's, it's going to be more than 50, right? But that's your starting point as if it was regular service. Okay, then now visualize from that point, you know, if you're cutting that at four inches, okay, all right, how much taller above that is it? You know, so if you're, you know, that's just a good starting point. You know, you know, it's not going to be less than that. You know, it's going to be more than that as well. Um, because then you want to ask when you're done, hey, would you like to have uh, continued service? You know, we can provide you regular service at this amount here. So that gives you a good idea there. Um, you know, so the wet and dry makes a big difference on the engine. Um, the drier it is, the more it'll want to disperse and be chopped up a lot easier. Some grasses, when it's wet, dude, you can forget it. You know, you're going to be there all damn day. Like weeds, like nut sedge and other weeds that really hold a lot of water, they do not want to shred up and mulch up. They just flop over here and they look like spinach out of a can. You just can't get them to, to disintegrate like you can't grass. Okay, let's see here. We check that off. Okay, uh, how thick the edging is. So that's the other thing. Going along the sidewalks, curbs, driveway, if it has that, you know, how, how, <clears throat> how, what's the distance between the edge of that grass, you know, and then that sidewalk or curb or whatever, and out is it? And I'm not talking about the little bitty runners. I'm talking about like how thick and then how far out. You know, if you guys saw one of my videos, I'll post it right up here, and uh, on monster edging. Dude, that stuff was like sawed. Like it was two and a half inches thick, and I was cutting off, you know, five, six inch squares or width off. That that has been growing because the soil was going over the edge. That had been growing for a couple of years, so that was like monster. Um, so that matters. You know, when you're doing edging on overgrown, you may want to use a stick edger because I'm telling you, I've been, I have a couple videos where I've been sliced in the face, you know, from here to there, bleeding all over the place, uh, busted in the lip and down here, um, because I didn't have a shield on there and I was edging, you know, with a string trimmer and there's no shield there, no guard to protect you. So when you're doing, you know, what happens is that trimmer line comes down, it wraps itself at the tip around something and it'll get underneath it and shoo, flip it right back up to you and smack you in the face. You don't want to lose an eye or get something lodged in your nose or you know whatever so or in your mouth and anytime you're working always keep your mouth closed because you know stuff could be flying in there we're not paying attention and hit you and that you would have a bad day so um that edging makes a difference uh sometimes overgrown cleanups the edging's really not that bad so consider that uh let's see here uh how thick the grass is along the fence that's another thing because some overgrown properties again you know there's various degrees of overgrown here um you could be going along uh the fence now they could have mowed their backyard a few times and not edge some people do that or trim so you have this taller and thicker trim area along the fence than the rest of the grass is so the thicker that is the more you're going to have to work your way there remember you want to go um if most trimmers are spinning counterclockwise so if that's the case, you want to move the trimmer from right going left. That'll kick all the grass out. But if the grass is overgrown, that grass ain't going nowhere. It's stuck right there. So you might as well mow along the fence line first. For one, so you have an area that you could walk and you can see where you're walking. No surprises from snakes and critters. And then when you're kicking that grass out, it'll come out to that open area, okay? away from the fence so it's clean and then you can mow over that again you're already gonna be there what's mowing a couple more minutes trust me it's not gonna change anything <clears throat> it just makes it look better and it looks makes you look better because you did a better quality job okay uh do you need to rake up or bag and then dump so that's the other thing you know some properties customers don't care just shred it up really good let it disperse there and yeah we'll do regular service they do regular service after that point Within a few weeks, everything's going to be disintegrated anyways, and it's, the lawn's going to look good. If they want you to bag it up, figure out how many bags you're going to need. Just guess. And then charge, you know, save $5 per bag. You don't have to tell them that. Just in your mind, think, okay, man, I'm probably going to need, you know, 20 bags. Okay, 5, 10, 50, 20, 25. Okay, so that's 25 bucks just for five bags. And I'm not talking about little bitty Walmart bags. Get you some 50, 55-gallon 
you know, two mil bags. Um, you know, so that makes a difference. If you got to rake that up and then bag that, you know, or if the mower you're using is a bagger. That's another thing to consider. And then what they want you to do with it. Do they want you, can you leave it there for trash pickup, which is always better, actually. If you have to haul it off, then you have to charge for that. So be sure to charge for that. Think of those things. How much is your dump fee? How many bags you're going to need to dump? How much time you're going to spend raking and putting it into piles and then to put it in the bags? Anytime you're going to bag something, take you a big the big trash can. Let's say you're running 50, 55 gallon bags, right? Take you that, that type of trash can, roll your bags over the edge, pop your little hole in there so the air can come out, and put a bungee cord around the edge so that way it's there. As you're putting your grass in there, the trash bag is keeping its shape and it's up. You're not sitting there trying to put grass inside of a bag on the ground and the wind's blowing and you can't. You'll be there all day long. I then did that shit for the first year. Uh, so, okay. And then also, find out if you need to do any pre-trimming. Some guys will take their trimmer, their high-power trimmer, and they'll trim a lot of heavy, thick areas first before they mow to knock down the tall stuff. Because the mower, you know, like I said earlier, they'll want to lay it down and won't want to come up. So think about that. Uh, some of the best line to use when doing pre-trimming is Black Diamond. Now, I'm not a fan of Echo Trimmer line at all. But I'm telling you, the black I've tried tons of lines from different companies. And the Black Diamond line is super sharp. So grab you some 105 or even the 95 is fine as a minimum. And use that to go in there and just wax stuff down. It will slice stuff so much easier and less stress and less bogged down on the trimmer. That's why I like that trimmer line for that. But, you know, as far as edging and regular trimming around, you know, uh, surfaces and stuff, it's two thumbs down. So, okay. Uh, that's, does that, uh, how much square foot are you cutting? So, that's the other thing. Around here, a regular sized lot is eight to 10,000 square feet. Okay? Uh, not a lot. Uh, and then you got some larger than that. Maybe it's a corner lot you're doing. Is the back overgrown and the front is not? Or is the front as well? Or are we doing an overgrown half acre, acre? What? All that makes a difference. So if you figure your average properties are 10,000 square feet and you're mowing 9,000 square feet or 10 or 8 or whatever, figure out, let's say, 8,000 of mowing square footage of your regular properties. How many of those can you put in that property you're doing? And if you charge 40 bucks for 8,000 square feet, is this a 16,000 square feet you're cutting? Well, all of a sudden now that's $80. Okay, as a minimum, and then you're going up. You're just trying to piece things together, you know, the best you can to give you an idea of where to start and where to go. Uh, do you have a helper? Because if you have a helper, you got to pay for that guy, right? No one wants to work for free. And uh, so be sure, you know, if you know you're going to be there, you know, three hours, or we're going to be here two hours, add an additional hour to that because you may be wrong. Maybe it's going to take longer than you think. Maybe you're going to be tired. Maybe this, maybe that, whatever. A few more extra breaks. Maybe it's hot as hell. I don't know. Hot as balls, you know. So put their figure in there, okay? Uh, how much time? How much time do you think? We just said that. You know, two hours, three hours, four hours. Do the best you can and then round up a little bit. Uh, how far away is the property uh, in distance from, from, you know, from where you're at? So you can do it. Some people can do it from, you know, where they're closest um, <clears throat> property is to where that one is or people measure from the shop or the house I always measure from the shop and the house if it's just a couple minutes away you know whatever if it's 30 minutes you know or 45 minutes away well there's some extra drive time there and gas you need to consider throw that in there too okay uh, start with sharp blades uh, these are some tips we're getting now we're getting to the tips that's helped you out that's going to help you out make your job a little easier so you want to make sure you're starting with fresh blades now they don't have to be brand new but you want those guys to be like shing, sharp okay because the sharper they are the less struggle you're going to have and the quicker you're going to get done with that job and the better it's going to look and take you an extra set if you have an extra set with you take one with you make sure they're just as sharp too okay uh, make sure to take your tool that you can uh bust those nuts off and put them back on uh okay uh walk the property if you can you know sometimes some properties overgrown or too much you can't walk you just but do the best you can you want to ask questions like, are there any steel rods or stakes or, you know, bricks or rocks um, anywhere, cinder blocks I need to be aware of, you know, or big dips or holes. You're asking the customer this on this property here where we're going to be working. Can you think of anything or any little transformer boxes or, you know, those types of things. Just run those through their mind and know and they'll think. They'll be like, okay, yeah, no. Or they'll be like, oh, yeah, over here in this area, there's a, ask them if there's any small stumps. 
So the more questions you ask like that, they're going to think about, oh, yes, because they may not be thinking about that you know, at the time. But when you say that, that might trigger memory. Be like, oh, yeah, we do. Actually, over here, there's a couple of tree stumps. Uh, they're only a couple inches above the ground, but you should be okay. So that helps you be aware in certain areas. Uh, okay, uh, let's say, okay, uh, walk around. Side discharge, if you're doing side discharge, which I would hope you're not mulching this, uh, and then cut at the, the highest setting. Always cut at the highest setting. Anytime I go in, and even someone's grass is three weeks without being cut, you know, I'm going in, I'm cutting that baby at four, four and a half inches tall. That's it. And I'll probably leave it like that. Uh, if I'm going to be cutting on a regular, you know, every week, I can cut a little shorter. Uh, but if it's every two weeks, you know, after this cleanup, I'll probably keep it at, you know, whatever height looks good for that grass because every turf is a little different, grass types, you know, things like that. Um, let's see, do the fence line first. Okay, so we talked about that. Uh, depending on the, the overgrown along the fence line, you may have to uh, mow first so you have room and then trim out, you know, Heard something. I'm the only one here, but maybe there's a dog. That's a dog. That's really lazy as a dog. Um, uh, and then you can go back and mow over that again. So there are other, you know, things that people use to, you know, help them do the estimate. And, you know, uh, those are just some of the things. And it's just a gut feeling. You know, if you think, man, I need to be charging more, then charge more. Because if the customer says, oh, no, I can't, I can't afford that. Well, look at it this way. Okay, well, if you've been letting it grow up like that and you want regular service, because some people will do this. Some people will let it go a month and then cut it and thinking they're going to get, you know, a two-time, you know, if normally they're cutting their grass every week, you know, say 40 bucks, all right, so that's 80, that's 160 a month. And they're thinking if you come in and charge $100 a month, they're still saving money. People think like that. So... You know, be like, okay, we used to, how many times you, uh, how did you, uh, when you used to get your grass cut before, you know, so maybe something happened, right? How often did you get a cut? Uh, every two weeks. Okay, then you figure, okay, $40, which you don't charge, you know, $80 a month. Okay, then you go up from there. And then some people, you know, don't really understand how much work goes into cutting overgrown properties. So, uh, you know, don't be afraid to ask for that money. They'll tell you, well, I can't afford that, but okay, I completely understand you know, what price range were you thinking? And if it's some stupid number, like half of what you said, be like, man, I'm sorry, but I just can't help you out. If you change your mind, let me know. This is where we're at for us to do it and leave it be, okay? Now, if you're in the beginning stages of your lawn business and you're dying to get money, then, you know, I've been in that position before two, three years ago when I was, as well, three years ago. Um, so I know exactly, you know, I'm not saying I'm doing it for $25, but... You know, if if you're going to make a good amount of money still, and you know that's going to help you, you know, uh, then then do that. You know, but that's up to you. But um, don't be afraid to ask for that higher dollar amount because the worst they can do is say no or negotiate down from there until you guys have an agreement between the both of you. So um, I hope <coughs> that's smooth. I hope. That helped some of you guys out there. Uh, I'm behind on videos. I got plenty filmed. Uh, I did a live mowing video yesterday with the walker. We're going to do some more. I uh, might shoot some today. Uh, I'll have the Kubota today. Uh, maybe the Ferris. Uh, I don't know. We'll see uh, what we'll do. <clears throat> but uh, anyways, guys. Um, the FS94R is down. Uh, doing a carburetor clean on that guy. So I picked up the trimmer attachment for the KM94R. That was only 109 bucks. That's cheaper than paying 360 for another new trimmer, and better than paying 80 dollars to go have it fixed from the local dealer and wait three or four weeks for it. Let me do that. It could, it could sit in my garage for three or four weeks, and then I can, you know, tune it up for free, other than a few parts. So, <clears throat> other than that, if you guys have any questions about this video, leave them in the comment section down below. If you have some other tips. Some other ways, things you want to add to how you do estimates, put them down below because that's going to help other people in the lawn care community figure things out. And that's what it's all about, man. Let's help each other out. Um, when I was starting, I was, you know, I went to a lot of channels, you know, how to do this, how to do that. And I learned quickly, but I learned, I learned 
faster by going out there and doing it. And I learn by, okay, wow, that was cool. I like that. Or, okay, that sucked. I really don't want to do that. Or I need to change this. And that's just part of growing, part of learning. You know, you're a man. And some of you out there are women who are doing this. So man up, woman up, and get out there and just try it. Don't always ask for the answer on every single thing. That's not how growing works. You gather some ideas and you go out there, experiment on your own for your own uh, end result because you will grow better um, having that knowledge of experience. So having an answer given to you, you know, to go and do something and getting experience from that is not the same as not necessarily making a mistake, but not quite having that same answer. Like, okay, well, next time I'm going to do it this way because this way sucked. That's the experience that is very valuable. So you want to have those, you know. Um, anyways, guys, I'm rambling. So um, we got a giveaway coming up. So check that out. It's a couple videos ago. Um, well, we're also going to be hitting four, um, one million views coming up. And I'm buying a power tool. I'm not telling anybody what it is. But it's going to be a power tool that I use, whether it's a hand power tool, <clears throat> like a drill or something, or a trimmer or a blower or whatever. I'm going to buy one. And then uh, when we do the giveaway and we get the winner, I will announce what the product is. The only thing I ask is that you pay for the shipping. So, of course, depending where you're at and depending on the size of this product will depend on the shipping. You know, So we'll work all that part out. Okay. Um, and stuff. So I'm excited about that. Our channel's growing pretty good. Um, anyways, guys, so uh, the money that I'm getting from YouTube, you know, from the views and the watch and the monetization, that's what I'm using to buy a product to give it right back to you guys. So I'm pretty excited about that. But uh, anyways, uh, I'm Kevin with Texas Veteran Power Outdoors. We'll see you next time.